so if you see that in this step we have filled the data structure sock hdr underscore un with the identity of the unix domain socket the unix domain socket is identified with the address family which is af underscore unix and the name of the socket right so in line number 52 and 53 we have actually filled this structure with the identity of the unix domain socket now the next step is to call the bind system call now what does actually bind system call do the purpose of the bind system call is that the application that is this server process is dictating the underlying operating system that is this application is running over the operating system and using bind system call this application is actually telling the operating system the criteria of receiving the data now what does that mean see your server process will going to receive the data which was sent by the client and that client is also running on the same machine so here bind system call is telling the operating system that if a sender process so sender process is a client process which will run on the same machine so the bind system call is being used by this server process to tell the operating system that if sender process sends the data which is destined to the socket with the name the following that is demo socket remember the name of our unix domain socket is demo socket right so if sender process that is the client process sends the data which is destined which is destined to the socket which has this name then such data needs to be delivered to this server process right so here actually the server process is dictating the operating system the criteria of the data that it wants to receive so let me elaborate a little bit more on it so here you have the application layer and on the application layer you have a server process running s and on the same machine you have a client process c which is also running and because and you know that the application layer runs on the top of the operating system right so using bind system call the server process is telling the operating system that i am interested in receiving the packet which is destined to the socket name demo socket so let me just write ds that stands for demo socket now if the client c sends the data to the server and in order to send the data the client c uses the name of the socket as demo socket that is ds then operating system will take the client data and it will redirect that data to the server process s why it is redirecting that data to the server process s because the server process s has told the operating system using bind system call that it is actually interested in receiving the data which is sent by the client process c and the client process c has sent the data destined to the socket demo socket so remember when the client c sends the data to the unix domain socket the client c has to specify the name of the unix domain socket in order to send the data so this is the functionality of bind system call so you can see the synopsis of the bind system call the first argument to the bind system call is actually the master socket file descriptor which we have already created as in the first step the second argument to the bind system call is actually the pointer to the structure which we have already filled with the credentials or identity of the unix domain socket so you can see that in the second argument of the bind system call we are actually we are actually supplying the identity of the unix domain socket that is the name of the unix domain socket and in the third argument you just have to pass the constant value which is nothing but the size of this structure so it is actually the size of the second argument that you have passed to the bind system call so this is the entire purpose of bind system call 
So going forward, if the bind system call returns minus 1, it means that for some reason the bind system call has failed. Right? So by line number 68, the bind system call is succeeded. Now let us discuss what is the next step. The next step is the listen system call. Now what does listen system call do? Let us try to understand that. So you can see that the server process in the next step has made a call to the listen system call. The first argument to the listen system call is the master socket file descriptor which you have already created and in the second argument you need to pass some numeric value. Now what is this numeric value? This numeric value means that if 20 clients sends the data to this server process at the same time, the operating system will queue the request or data of those 20 clients and deliver those requests to our server process one by one for processing. If more than 20 client requests or data arrives to this server process, the operating system will going to drop those requests or data from extra clients. So this is what listen system call does. Using listen system call, our server process is telling the operating system to maintain a queue of maximum size 20. And again, if listen system call fails, then it returns minus 1. And in case of failure, then we just exit. Now, in the next step, you can see that the server process is making a call to the accept system call. Right? So, before making a call to the accept system call, the server has to enter into the infinite loop. Because all server process usually runs 24 into 7. So, it is a property of a server process that... Good servers are those which are always usually up 24 into 7. So good servers should always up and running and should never go down. Have you ever seen Facebook or Google page fail to load because of their respective servers are down? No, right? So it is a common practice that server process is that server logic is always encapsulated inside a infinite loop. Right? So once we enter into the infinite loop, you can see that our server process will print that it is waiting for the accept system call. So the synopsis of the accept system call is simple that in the first argument you just have to pass the master socket file descriptor which is also called as connection socket. And the second and third argument for Unix domain socket you can simply pass as null null. Their discussion is not worth for this course. So remember the return value of accept system call is actually a communication file descriptor or data socket. Using this data socket or communication file descriptor, this server will going to exchange the data with the client for the rest of the lifetime of the connection. So remember the accept system call is first of all a blocking system call. Now what does that mean? It means that the moment your server process invokes the accept system call, the server process execution will get blocked. That is, it will not execute line number 92. And it will stay blocked until the server process receives the connection initiation request from the client. It means that by invoking the accept system call, our server process is now waiting for some client to get connected with server process. So therefore, accept system call is actually a blocking system call. Blocking system calls are those system calls which when executed gets blocked until certain events occur. So in this case, the accept system call will stay blocked until some client sends connection initiation request to our server process. So let us suppose that there exists some client on the same machine and that particular client has sent the connection initiation request to our server. So the moment our server will receive the connection initiation request, this accept system call will return and it will return us the data socket that will be used to carry out communication with the client which is just connected to this server. So the code execution will now proceed. So the moment the client gets connected to our server successfully. In line number 97, our server will print that connection has been accepted from the client. So remember the functionality of a server that it will keep on 
doing the summation of the values of the non-zero values that are sent by the client which is connected to the server. Now the server is again entering into the infinite loop, right? It is entering into this infinite loop because our server will going to accept all the integer values that is being sent by the client and it will going to process all those values and keep calculating the summation of those values unless until the client sends zero. So it is for this reason that our server is now entering in, into the infinite loop again. Now remember our server has to accept some data from the client and to accept that data our server process need a memory. So buffer is the memory pointer and using memset our server process is actually removing any garbage value that was left in this buffer for some reason. Right? So in the next step you can see that our server process is now actually invoking the read system call. The synopsis of the read system call is that it is that the first argument that is passed to the read system call is actually the communication file descriptor. So remember it is the data socket that is used for carrying out actual data exchange with the client. Therefore the job of the master socket file descriptor was over at the accept system call because master socket file descriptors are used only to accept and create new connections with the new client whereas actual data exchange happens on the data socket which is actually the return value of the accept system call. So all this theory we have already covered in the basics of socket programming design and when we were discussing the design of socket programming. So read system call is again a blocking system call. It means that the execution of this server program will halt at this line and it will stay halt or blocked at this line until the client that has just connected to our server has actually sent some data to our server. So the moment the connected client sends the data to our server, our server will read that data into this buffer which is passed as a second argument to the read system call. And, and after receiving the data, the read system call will get unblocked and the execution of this program will proceed further. The third argument to the read system call is actually the size of the buffer which is passed as the third argument to the read system call. Right? So the return value of read system call is the number of bytes that is read or received by the server. So if the return value of the read system call is negative, it means some error has taken place and our server process is just terminating in case of some error happens. Now remember that, that our server process is actually expecting only the integer values from the client. So buffer is actually a memory and only integer values are expected to receive from the clients. So it is for this reason that we are actually copying only 4 bytes of memory that is size of int is 4 bytes. So we are copying only the integer value that is received in the buffer into the data type variable. Now this data type variable is actually a integer type variable. So basically we are copying the integer value that is received from the buffer into the integer type variable. And now we are checking that if data is zero, then we are just break. That is, the, our server process will come out of the inner loop. Otherwise, if the data value that is the integer value that is sent by the client is not zero, then remember that our server process will keep on doing the summation of the values that is sent by the client. Right? So let us suppose that the client has sent a non-zero value. It means that our server process will execute this line that is it will do summation and a server process will iterate once more inside the inner infinite loop it will prepare the buffer again in order to receive the next data from the client and our server process will again get blocked on the read system call 
that is our server process is now waiting for the next data item from the client so you can see that our server process is kind of a infinite loop and it will continue to wait for the next data item from the client until the client sends you until the client sends zero as the value to the server right and therefore you can see that a server process checks that if the client has sent the value zero to a server then we will break so we will be in line number 123 when a client has sent a value zero to our server so the next thing that our server is supposed to do is to actually send back the result and what is the result the result is the summation of all values that a server process has computed so far so using sprintf command we are actually preparing a formatted string and this formatted string will be the result that our server process will send back to the client right so in line number 124 our server process has actually prepared the result that is supposed to be sent back to the client so in line number 127 our server process is actually sending back the result to the client so it is done using write system call so the synopsis of the write system call is exactly same as the read system call the only thing to note here is that that the write system call is a non-blocking system call that is write system call execute immediately and it do not blocks for any reason so in line number 127 our server has actually sent back the result to the client successfully right and after sending the result to the client successfully our server process has actually closed the connection with the client right so it means that our server process is done with this client and now our server process should be in a position to entertain the new client so in line number 135 we are actually going to iterate the outer infinite loop once again right so the server process will now again invoke the accept system call and remember accept system call is a blocking system call so our server process is now actually waiting for the new connection request from the new client so you can see that this explains the entire state machine or our, of our of our server process you are requested to type out these lines on your own machine and please do not copy paste just type out these lines and try to understand the logic of this server program and try to understand the synopsis of different system calls we have used in this server program so that you get a fair idea and practice regarding how to implement a unix domain server process so i have explained all the steps that are required to implement a unix domain server process so we have just discussed all the steps that are required to implement a unix domain server process now the next we will going to discuss the steps required to implement a client process now note that the implementation of client process is very simple and straightforward